Hello and a warm welcome to another edition of To The Point. Kerala is the only state in the country which formed the first communist government after independence. And since that time, there has been an alternating pattern of governance between two coalitions, that is UDF and the LDF. And if you go by that history, it's the left front's turn to form the government this year. But as they say, politics is one of the most unpredictable games, so the jury is still out. But joining me now is one of the very tall leaders of CPIM. He is the Central Committee uh, member. He's been the former Finance Minister of Kerala between the year 2006 and 2011. And also, he's the man behind behind Kerala's People's Plan campaign, which was a landmark in the history of decentralization. I welcome Mr. Thomas Isaac on to the point. Welcome, sir. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Isaac, uh, I'd like to begin from you. According to what the opinion polls are saying, what is your hunch? Is the left front, are you going to see a very tight contest like what it was in 2011? Or is it going to be something moderate or the left front is going to sweep? What is your hunch? Um, all the opinion polls do predict a left victory, okay. a moderate left victory. That's to say something between 80 to 100, all of them. Okay. The range is there. Okay. Um, so you wouldn't say there is going to be a thumping majority for the left? It will be, by Kerala standards, <laughs> very good okay. majority. Okay. In the last five years, you have ruled Kerala with a majority of two. So this is definitely going to be much better, majority of 20 or 25 or 30. Okay. Uh, so that is, that is the number game. Huh? But what is the rationale behind this thinking? Uh, one, there's a big anti incumbency against the government. Okay. Uh, more for is corruption. Corruption has been a At major issue of public protest and campaign in Kerala, and it haunts the ruling front even on the eve of the election. But there is a perception, I was traveling across cities in Kerala, and you know, there is a perception that this Congress government has been the most corrupt government so far. Would you agree to this perception? Fully. Okay. Uh, they have many something else to their credit, mm -hmm. but corruption has been rampant. Uh, earlier also in government there would be corruption, but no time, no time in Kerala history has the chief minister himself been accused in this manner. But do you think corruption? corruption is a very big issue in Kerala? Because Mr. Chandy himself has said that people are not bothered about controversies. They are concentrating on the development which he's given to the state. <laughs> the UPA government was voted out. Why? Right. Uh, not that they didn't bring in uh, social um, uh, programs. Uh, NREGM and so many welfare programs were initiated by them. And uh, well, Manmohan Singh himself was the um, big development man <laughs> in the neoliberal way. Uh, but they lost out. They were thrown out primarily because of corruption. Corruption is a major issue. So Chief Minister may delude himself, thinking corruption doesn't matter, but is going. I don't. Not I think work. it is going to be a okay. major issue. Okay, uh, uh, Mr. Isaac. Now coming to the challenges before the left. Of course, uh, there's a lot of positivity, and people do think that left is going to form the government. But as a party, and not only in Kerala, but but across the states where left has had a presence, uh, what is the biggest challenge for the left at the moment? Um, because there were allegations that left is becoming irrelevant, uh, it, it, it's not moving with the times. How do you really counter to that uh, allegation? Uh, a major issue with the left is left development has been very uneven. If we take the left concentration, it's just Bengal, Kerala, Tripura. Right. Then you can say pockets of uh, Tamil Nadu, Andhra. Some pockets uh, of Orissa. Like that, it's very uneven development. Mm -hmm. Now, it brings in a whole lot of dilemmas for the left. Now, in Who's to blame for that? Um, well... The party itself. Yeah, not party itself. Maybe our opponents are even more clever than us. We do not fully understand the complexities of Indian society. But this uneven development brings in major talent. For example, in Kerala, mm -hmm. You cannot say now uh, the good jobs, 
the new young generation who are educated because of our hard work, now you can say wait for revolution to get a quality job. They want it now. And uh, the people who say oh, the neoliberal party is the only way you can get quality jobs through investment. So, do well, you, so you have to... Are you indicating to the fact that left's ideology has not met up to the aspirations of the people? Well, it met to the aspirations of people and that's why we are in Kerala, the most important party. No, but, but as in now, you said that now other new states. challenges have come. Okay. So you have to have a, more, uh, a new program. To me, these challenges is one thing to redistribute, okay. other thing to when you say redistribute, growth. what does that mean? Pardon? When you say redistribute, what what the, uh, in what terms well, are you? In Kerala, the left has been responsible for higher wages, land distribution, then social provisioning of public health system, education, and so on. So this is a redistributive strategy which has brought in people and has resulted in improvement of the quality of life of people. Right. Now this new generation who are educated, healthy, etc., one, their aspirations are very different. Uh, they and that's where BJP them. is promising the moon to the people. So we are telling them, look, BJP, they have the Gujarat. What is the quality of life of Gujarat? It is uh, one of the lowest ranking states in India. Uh, Kerala has not been that wealthy, but we have provided a decent life to people. Therefore, we have to tell the people, we have an agenda to ensure, without leaving up this quality of life, the rights of the people, etc., we have an agenda to ensure quality jobs. And that's the program we are trying to put forward. But despite all the, uh, the social development indicators you are talking about, and you have given to, states like Ker to, to a state like Kerala, why is there still a perception that the party is very anachronistic, it is not living with the times, it doesn't know how to cater with the youths? Uh, how will you really attract and lure the young talent towards your party? Well, uh, I don't think so. <laughs> there may be some people who think like that, but the majority of people in Kerala still do not think like that. Okay. Uh, that's one. But society... In Kerala, is, yes, but, uh, but what uh, about uh, other states? Yeah, society is changing. Eh? Um, Kerala is a fast, information-savvy society, uh, modern technology. Um, nearly half the family, somebody has gone outside, had some foreign experience. So society is changing and we have to understand these changes and, and um, say reinvent ourselves, okay? And but when you say reinvent, Mr. Isaac, I wonder how many leaders, the senior leadership, how have they really reinvented your, uh, themselves? I'm not talking about you because you have seen, you go door to door, meet up with the people and you don't believe in giving speeches, putting up posters, but... For example, tall leaders like uh, Mr. Achyutanandan, Mr. Pina Rai Vijayan, uh, they don't seem to be living with times at all. They built up this Kerala. Eh? Okay. okay, we have to accept that first uh, through building trade unions, mass movements. But will Kerala struggle. move forward with, the lead now, with their leadership? No, they do. It's not my opinion I'm saying. It's the party's opinion, including them, that we have to uh, understand this new Kerala, reinvent ourselves, and we have been trying to, we have been trying to, for example. So in this process of reinventing Kerala, of course they have built up the base, and now it's for the, uh, for the leaders like you to take it forward. But the thing is that, will the people really accept the two leaders I just named as chief ministers, for example, Pina Rai Vijayan and Mr. Achyutanandan, uh, they of course have given a very strong base to Kerala, but will the people, the newer generation, will it act, will the newer generation accept them as chief ministers? Well, these opinion surveys we refer to have a question, whom would you like to see as the chief minister of Kerala? It is a CPM leadership. <laughs> so people... A whole lot of reports are doing the round. One is 92, one is 71, 72. So who would be... That party will decide after the election. There is no practice in the party. But is it not true that there's a lot of uh, ego tussle between Pina Rai Vijayan and Mr. Chutanandan? There were a lot of reports uh, doing the rounds like Yes, that. frankly, yes, there were. And, uh, but one feature, advantage left has today in Kerala is that factional fight has receded. 
okay. into the background. Like and, what yeah. we saw in 2011. Yeah, yeah, that's right. The last uh, run up, uh, uh, run up to last. You lost election. in 2011 because of infighting yeah. and factionalism. But now, the left is united, and if there is any disunity in the political system, it is with the right Congress. UDF is in serious trouble. They are not able to still sort it out. They are trying their level best. Uh, but I tell you, it's a divided DUDF which will be facing the election. Uh, Mr. Isaac, now with BJP also, uh, you know, uh, forming this triangular contest, earlier it was just a bipolar politics which we saw in Kerala. With BJP's entry, BJP at the center, and now BJP all gung-ho in Kerala to at least open an account, uh, do you see the, the game of politics in Kerala changing because of the entry of, uh, of BJP? When in what ways do you really see the change? Kerala has always been one of the strongest units of RSS, but never they got popular support. Okay. Uh, either Janasang or later versions of BJP, they never gained anything more than 10% of the votes. Let's put it that way. But this time, BJP is also contacting various castes, like for example, SNDP Yogam, the BDJS, with, with, with whom they have allied. Is that going to really change the game? Yeah, that's a very important question. You know, why did BJP fail to make inroad into Kerala? It's not just because our credit, no. It's because the cultural ethos of Kerala. Uh, the renaissance ethos of Kerala has been summed up by Sri Narayana Guru. Uh, whatever be your religion, what is important is that you be a good human being. And here comes one party which says, to be a, be a good human being, you have to be a Hindu. It won't be accepted in Kerala. Is it not true because there were reports that the Isawa community, which, uh, which basically traditionally was with the left, is now drifting towards uh, BJP. Are these reports uh, correct? Uh, no. Uh, see, BJP used to have a 10%, 12% vote share in Kerala. They claim in the last uh, panchayat elections going to above 30, to become 13 plus, that's all. There's not a big swing and so on. But, but in the Aruvikara bipole, uh, the way they perform, don't you think that it could, it has given a lot of hope to BJP? Yes. Uh, uh, in the Aruvikara election, what happened was, uh, uh, they were able to attract left out. We learned the lesson there. So, from since then, we have been uh, really attacking, targeting BJP's caste But politics. you do worry BJP's entry at the moment in the political landscape Definitely. of Kerala. BJP is a big uh, orange force ruling the center, having immense resources and cadets. And they have a very strong cadre base in Kerala. They have roped in the caste organizations which have been sidelined in Kerala politics. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's a challenge. That challenge has to be met. And therefore, uh, the big ideological challenge, and we have been successful. In the panchayat election showed that our mass base, they are not able to get. And we emerged as the top, about 60 percent of the panchayats and municipalities in Kerala, we won. But uh, I was reading, uh, you know, somewhere, and I, I read it, and a lot of leaders have also been talking about some kind of a new social churning through which uh, Kerala is uh, going through. Because of the entry of BJP, some analysts have also gone ahead and said that, you know, uh, it's, it's going to be a paradigm shift the way the Hindutva forces are projecting themselves in Kerala. Do you believe so? Um, there is a lot of social change, so, um, churning taking place. Okay. One, BJP is trying to attract uh, uh, Hindu mass to their fold through caste organization. Uh, there is a big question mark. How much of the, how much from the UDF, how much from the LDF? That's a big question mark. Second in line is, the issue is, now, in Kerala, the minorities have been with Congress. Left support have been some 25% of Christian Muslim. But now the recent polls have shown that their support is increased to 30 for Christians, 33 for Muslims. Now, that's very interesting change. That shows, if you look at the pattern of last panchayat election, wherever minorities are in a minority. Hmm. In yeah, Kerala, yeah. minorities are in a majority number yeah. of districts. They come with the left against BJP. So this is a churning that is taking place uh, in Kerala. 
but whether it will lift into change in the paradigm shift of three cornered fight That's too early to say i that think uh, this is a road end of bjp uh, they started with high claims and so so you but now they say we will open a count that's right. all eh? right <laughs> we will open a so count so bjp's entry and uh, the bombastic uh, statements uh, by various ministers and uh, prime minister they don't worry you as such no Party Our anyway. fire is against UDF. Okay. UDF. Now people are upset with UDF. We want to ensure those voters won't shift to BJP. Okay. You see, so we tell them if you want to defeat UDF, mm -hmm. uh, you don't go to BJP. You come to left. But uh, your main opponent in Kerala is left, and in West Bengal, which is also going through elections, you have handheld with the Congress. Does that not in any way confuse the voters here in Kerala? Uh, Kerala has not yet become a big issue, uh, but I myself not fully aware of the extent of relationship between Congress and uh, and uh, CPM there. Uh, so I do not want to comment on this. No, but will it not impact in any way because you are holding hands of your rival party uh, in one state and you are opposing and putting up a strong fight in one state so very, does very well it, it doesn't affect it, it would equally apply for congress okay. it will equally apply for congress udf also has been saying that left doesn't have too many leaders and that is why they had to rope in a lot of independence do you agree with what uh, uh, they really have said well what right is your from, compulsion right behind from the in beginning this is one of our united united front tactics okay. to rope, bring in um, the, the independent people, socially respected. So it doesn't become a drawback for your party in any no, way? No, we don't. See, our first communist ministry, two of our most celebrated ministers, the health minister and education minister, mm -hmm. were independents, not communist party members. Okay, point taken. But I'll have to take a break here. When we come back, we talk about Kerala model of development and how the new government will take it forward. Back in a moment. <laughs> Welcome back. You're watching To The Point with the tall left leader, Thomas Isaac. Uh, Mr. Isaac, before I go into the Kerala model of development and what uh, if, the, if the left front forms the government and what you'll do, we'll talk about it later. But as of now, what we have seen after the JNU controversy and the Rohit Vemula controversy at Hyderabad University, we've suddenly seen that left and the Dalit forces have come together. Is that the new road ahead for the left front? In fact, is something uh, very encouraging and uh, gives a lot of scope for optimism about future. Okay. You don't see it as a compulsion in any way? Uh, no, it is the most oppressed section in Kerala. In, uh, sorry, it is the most oppressed section in India. Right. There is. And for various reasons, I think there has been a failure on the part of the land to understand the nature of uh, the depravity of caste. And you are saying this despite all the historical differences between the Ambedkarite ideology and the way the left has uh, spoken about its ideology? We may not there take the Ambedkarite ideology. Let me take the case of Kerala. Hmm. In the Kerala, we had, say, Ayangali, who was a, right. you know, in the 20th century beginning, led the Dalit movement in Kerala. Uh, but we were able to take the legacy forward. Mm. Uh, we were very active in social reform movement uh, in the 50s, 40s. And therefore, we carried forward the legacy of social reform. But unfortunately, this kind of creative intervention within the uh, anti-caste movements did not take place in many parts of India. Right. Uh, now, So is this the new way you will fight the communal forces in the country? Is that the road ahead? Yeah. See, Holding Tamil hands Nadu, of the Dalit Tamil forces. Nadu, Karnataka and Andhra. Right. Now look at the left actions. Of course there are strikes on land and uh, wages but social issues have been very actively taken. Right. See just yesterday I was reading that Karnataka secretary is in jail uh, because he wanted to uh, have uh, Dalits to dine within the temple premise. So CPM today is taking up social issues very seriously. 
And now there is also self-criticism. We did not do that so in the past. And that's how it will research probably and make itself and relevant. Now, uh, the BJP's uh, upper caste bias in their interventions uh, is in fact bringing the Dalits away from a kind of any illusion uh, with respect to BJP. And they find left is a force which will defend them. And that collaboration, I think, uh, holds much prosperous for India. So it is a combination of so red probably you will do away with the impression, like earlier people had Definitely. said, that Congress was the new left. Yes. So now left will attain its original position. It will say... And displace Congress. There is a need for a red and blue. Congress. Okay, the red and blue. Well said. Uh, okay, uh, Mr. Isaac, uh, now I want to talk to you about the liquor policy. Uh, there is a liquor ban, uh, which has been uh, announced by the UDF government. But... Uh, Despite the fact Sita Ram Yachuri has said that he will not reverse the alcohol policy of the present Kerala government, there is an impression that there's no clarity on the part of the left front. Because uh, leaders like uh, Pinarai Vijayan, they said that no, he's not in for prohibition, but he is, a, he is there for abstention. What would really work so, in your case? You should understand what is the liquor policy of UDF government. This chief minister was the one who brought a cabinet note to say, even those bars which were not sufficient, didn't meet the norms to be a bar, yeah. they need to be four star and so on, they need to be given the license. He brought it to the cabinet. Mm -hmm. So that was his liquor policy even, say, one year back. Okay. Then because of scabbles within the UDF, one-upmanship and the outright corruption, a whole lot of things has come to the present stage where there is no prohibition in Kerala. Mm -hmm. Government is selling liquor. <laughs> Government now sells entire liquor but in Kerala. Says, but UDF says the other thing. He says, uh, UDF says that it's it's a victory for them because if Sita Ram Yachuri is saying that they will not reverse the alcohol policy, it's their victory. It's no, not left's no, victory. No. See, there is no prohibition. Mm -hmm. So there is nothing for us to reverse, revert from. In fact, government is selling liquor. Government revenues from liquor has increased by 800 crores last year, this current year. Total sale of government liquor through government outlets is almost the same. So what is this provision? We, on the left, is one party who would take disciplinary actions, um, very strict with respect to uh, any social drinking, even private drinking, is bad. And this is one minor vice which we are trying to root out from the party. That's first. Second, we are committed to bring down the consumption of liquor in Kerala. Three, and therefore whether this shop's close will be opened or not, well, they had closed down the Arak shops on the eve of election. But how do you counter to the charge? Right. We did not open but it. How do you counter the charge that Kerala is one of the hottest tourist destinations and the tourism, tourism is getting impacted. How would you really recover those losses out of tourism? So this is the, these are issues which has to be thought very seriously. Mm -hmm. We had to bring down the liquor consumption in Kerala, but at the same time allow packages for tourists. Okay. So how do you do that? How would that, that has to be worked precisely around. we will discuss and decide. Even six months back, VUDF was trying to change the present policy, saying tourism. It is then something else happened. So these ad hoc decisions do not add into any um, uh, comprehensive policy. That is the situation with respect to UDF. We, we are committed to reduce liquor consumption in Kerala. It's a major social issue. It has to be addressed. But at the same time, there is tourism, there are other issues. And therefore, how do you do that? That we will congregate. Then you try and work it out when the government... But we are not for prohibition. Simply, it cannot be enforced. Tell me one instance in the history of humankind where prohibition has succeeded. So it only totally drives people to... Uh, so what is the formal stand of the party? Are you in for prohibition or are you in for abstention? No, we are not for prohibition. We are for abstention. But Sita Ram Yachuri says, says no, something Sita else. Sita Ram Yachuri said, don't reverse. The present government has no prohibition. Okay. It is providing liquor through liquor shops. Okay. 
So there is nothing, you see. So there's no ambiguity, no uh, ambiguity in what Yachuri has said and what you are saying. The totality of statement by Siddharam Yachuri, okay. not just one sentence. Okay. So there is no ambiguity whatsoever. We are not for prohibition. Okay. Absolutely no. But we are for abstention. We want people to drink less, okay. consume point, less. Yeah, point taken. Now, coming to the economic front uh, of Kerala. Uh, Kerala's economy was sustaining itself on remittances. And now with thousands and lakhs of people coming back to Kerala, it's, it's a reverse exodus which we are seeing because of uh, uh, the political conditions in uh, countries like Iraq, Yemen. Uh, how, how will your government take this process forward in terms of giving employment, giving minimum standards of living to the people who are coming from those countries? Uh, what is your plan, really? And this is a big, big crisis looming before us. Uh, they contribute something like 35, 30, more than 30 percent of state domestic product. The income they send is equal to 30 percent of our state domestic product. So a shrinkage of that can bring down the growth rate of Kerala from percent 7, 8, 9 percent to 3 percent, 4 percent. Right. And that's a very mm. big challenge. Yeah, big challenge. So it means, one, making and I'm serious up to, to see, protect the, the jobs there, okay. help them to migrate to other Western countries. Three, with a big urgency, develop employment within Canada. Mm -hmm. So can we use their savings for investment in Canada? Okay. New models, business models which will attract. One thing we are contemplating, it is have um, a shelf of projects, major projects, which people in Gulf can take shares, invest. Um, and guarantee state gives is when they come back and if they are qualified, they would be given a job within a time period. So you buy a job when the time before you come back. So innovative business models like this will have to be thought out to provide, take care of the situation, how to reintegrate the people who come. I don't think everybody who come down, come back is a burden right. because they come with a lot of skills, they come with savings. So there will be a section who will have to be rehabilitated. Right. But others, the challenge is how to integrate And you feel that it's not part. going to be very difficult for the government? It's going to be difficult, but it will be faced. I mean, this is in fact, uh, a major statement of the left in his coming manifesto. Thank you so much, Mr. Isaac, uh, for coming on to the point. So that's it from me here. Goodbye and thanks for watching.